Focused assessment with sonography for trauma or FAS is a non-invasive point of care test that is performed early in resuscitation to identify free fluid. These are the learning objectives. The regions covered in a FAST scan are the perihepatic, pericardial, perisplenic, and pelvis. The curved linear ultrasound probe provides good penetration and resolution. The sector probe is often used to scan the pericardial region. For proper orientation, the probe marker indicated by the red dot is directed to the patient's head for a longitudinal view and the patient's right side for a transverse view. Probe marker shape and color vary in different ultrasound machines. Regardless of the view, the marker should always be oriented to coincide with the left side of the ultrasound image as shown. Correct knobs adjustment is essential to avoid misinterpretation and misdiagnosis. The 2D gain knob controls the overall image brightness and darkness. The TGC controls image brightness and darkness at a specific point in the image. Proper focus zone adjustment improves image sharpness, as shown by better cortical medullary differentiation and organ outline here. The freeze knob is used to freeze a moving image and examine the image more closely. Appropriate depth adjustment is important so that the region of interest can be sufficiently visualized. This image shows a redundant space deep to the kidney as indicated by the spine sign. On the other hand, only half of the spleen and kidney are shown in this image. Fluid collection, if present deep to the kidney, will be missed. Be familiar with the layouts of the knobs in different ultrasound machines. Before we dive into the fast scan, the following are important to know. Fluid appears black or anechoic in relation to the adjacent structures. Free fluid is not encapsulated, like bile within the gallbladder and blood within the vessel lumen. Soft tissue or debris appears grey or isoechoic, similar to this sludge within the gallbladder. Bone and stone appears very bright or echogenic, just like this gallbladder stone. Now, let's start the fast scan beginning with the perihepatic region. Start the scan in a longitudinal view with the probe marker directed towards the patient's head. Place the probe at the level of the patient's nipple along the mid-axillary line. Move the probe inferiorly until you see the liver and right kidney. Look for the Morrison's pouch, which is a potential space between the liver and the right kidney. This video demonstrates the movement of the probe and the sonographic appearance. As the probe slides inferiorly, the ribs and lungs images alternate with each other. The ribs reflect sound beam, producing dark shadow in the far field. Similarly, the air in the lungs reflect the sound beam, causing dirty shadow in the far field. Keep the probe in the same position, making only small movements once you have identified the Morrison's pouch. Look out for free fluid here. Image 1 shows a normal liver and right kidney. There is no free fluid. The Morrison's pouch is the most sensitive region to look for free intraperitoneal fluid because dependent fluid tends to distribute here in a supine patient. This is demonstrated in image 2. Pay attention to the inferior tip of the liver. Small amount of fluid can accumulate here and should not be missed. The perihepatic space lies superior to the liver and inferior to the right hemidiaphragm. Image 3 shows fluid in the perihepatic space and Morrison's pouch. There is right pleural effusion located superior to the right hemidiaphragm in image 4. Be careful of potential pitfalls. Once a fluid-containing structure is identified, 
it is essential to determine the source of the fluid to avoid misdiagnosis. Image 1 is a cyst arising from the right kidney. Image 2 is a dilated pelvic calicial system arising from an atrophic right kidney. In image 3, the linear and echoic or duct structure is the inferior vena cover, while the pear-shaped fluid-filled structure anterior to the IVC is the gallbladder. Image 4 demonstrates a complex cyst in the liver that could be mistaken for hemoperitoneum. Next is the pericardial region. Use the left lobe of the liver as an acoustic window for evaluation of the pericardial space. Place the probe on the subsiphoid. Orientate the probe transversely with the marker directed to the patient's right side. Aim the probe towards the patient's head and left shoulder. Flatten the angle of the probe to the skin and apply gentle pressure downwards to maintain probe contact on the patient. Liver can be seen in the near field of the image with adjacent heart at the far field. All of the heart must be visualized. This can be achieved by increasing the depth of the ultrasound image. In this pericardial view, an echoic fluid is seen surrounding the heart suggesting pericardial effusion. Be aware that ascites may mimic pericardial fluid. Careful orientation of the probe can overcome this pitfall. Moving on to the perisplenic region. Start the scan in a longitudinal view. Place the probe at the level of patient's nipple along the mid-axillary line. Move the probe inferiorly until you see the spleen and left kidney. Look for free fluid in the spleno-renal space. This video demonstrates the ribs and lungs images alternating with each other. Depending on the size and location of the spleen, you may have to move the probe more posteriorly from the mid-axillary line to obtain the best view of the spleno-renal space. Keep the probe in the same position, making only small movements once you have identified the spleno-renal space. Look out for free fluid here. In the left flank, small fluid collections may be found superior to the spleen at the interfaces between the left hemidiaphragm and the spleen and at the splenorenal space. Perisplenic fluid and left pleural effusion are demonstrated in image 2. Image 1 shows an atrophic left kidney that appears so bright or echogenic such that the surrounding perinephric fat appears dark mimicking fluid collection with blood clot. Image 2 shows fluid containing cysts arising from the left kidney. The final region is the pelvis. Sonographic detection of free fluid in the pelvis is best performed before the insertion of a catheter when the urinary bladder is full. An empty bladder will compromise the detection of free fluid. The probe is placed just above the level of the symphysis pubis and angled inferiorly towards the feet to fan through the bladder. Unlike the right and left flank, fast scan of the pelvis requires evaluation in both longitudinal and transverse planes. The urinary bladder should be scanned in its entirety in both planes. Here are normal images of a female pelvis. Free fluid, if present, will accumulate posterior to the uterus in the pouch of Douglas. As more fluid accumulates, the fluid can be seen anterior to the uterus, occupying the uterovesical space. In males, free fluid can be seen in the retrovesical space. This video shows the pelvis in a sagittal plane. The probe is placed as shown. It is fanned from right to the midline and to the left. Pay attention to the retrovesical space where fluid usually accumulates.
This image shows the presence of free fluid within the pelvic region. The echogenic structure with posterior shadowing are due to gas-containing bowel loop. Physiological fluid of approximately 50 ml is common amongst females of reproductive age, as seen here. Hence, it is important to correlate clinically to avoid misdiagnosis. Here are your take-home messages. Thank you.